Hi, Martin here. Welcome back for the part two of the gas tank tuck for your 99 through 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Where we left off is where I had that big piece of metal that we're going to put in the wheel well, all cut out, and I want to reinforce it by rolling beads into it. So we're going to head down to Pahrump, Nevada, where I got a friend of mine that can take care of that for us. So let's get started. I made it down here to Pahrump, my buddy Rick here. And by the way, he has his own uh, YouTube channel called Diesel Freak. I will put a link up here to his page and I'll also put one in the description down below. And please, show him some love and subscribe to his channel. We'll help him out, all right? Thank you. All right, now he's got a, a bead roller like I was saying. We got this uh, marked out right here. I'm gonna see how it goes. We already tried, uh, we did experiment with one of the uh, pieces that I cut out that uh, didn't fit originally. Uh, oh yeah, this was the actual piece that was right here. And uh, we threw a few beads into it. And that definitely takes the drum effect out of it, you know, where it was making noise before. Now that ain't happening. And we're gonna try something a little different on the uh, another piece. We're gonna try putting a flange in one. And uh, where it actually sits down into this. I think that's going to look really cool if it works out. All right, well, let's get started. All right, here we go. We got it set up. We're going to do the middle one first. I'm the apprentice in this equation. <laughs> now, he, he gave me some screw in here just a little bit ago. He, he's the muscle in this equation. I just got to basically steer. I got to keep it on the line. We'll see how I do. Rick was saying this isn't, it doesn't roll that easy either. Um, I mean, we got, got 18 gauge steel here. And so it puts up a little bit of a fight, you know, putting this bead into it. Pretty cool. All right, we tried this uh, flange die on here, and before I was playing with it, making that noise, that took it completely away. And man, that just it makes it super rigid. And uh, Rick suggested that we do that to the uh, large piece all the way around the ridge, and I think that'd be a really cool idea. And then it would actually drop the center. Down just a little bit more because I actually inch. got that room. Huh? About an eighth inch. Yeah, an eighth inch. And because I got plenty of room between the gas tank and the plate. All right, now we're getting the larger piece rolled. There you can see Rick is checking 
the dies and the piece of metal we uh, had a little problem in the first one we did where we broke through so he's just making sure the pressure isn't too tight on the bead roller notice the uh, bicycle tire there in the hole we actually have a bicycle flipped upside down and the plate is laying on top of the bicycle tire and that's helping hold it level while we're doing this worked out pretty cool Action. Good job, Rick. I'm just a dummy turning the crank. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, it turned out really nice. Uh, definitely stiffened it up. And then that's going to set into there. Voila. Yep. Now we'll put screws around that to hold that down. Alright, there'll be a lot of welding to come tomorrow. Well, thank you so much, Rick, for helping out. No problem. Glad it could be a service. Right. Glad just to be your remember. apprentice. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember, check out his channel. I'll have that link right up here and down in the description below. And, uh, Give him, show him some love and please subscribe to his channel. Thank you so much. And I got the piece of metal up here. Um, the one mistake I did make, I should have marked when I had this hole centered over the uh, fuel pump assembly, I should have marked this metal here on what's left of the wheel well spare tire thing and on this piece of metal basically you know what true north is and then we could have made all these lines in here because I want this line right here to be perfectly right down the middle of the vehicle you know um, so when I went down to Rick's and we did this I had forgotten to do you know line that up so I guessed and I was off by about that much so but the hole is big enough, so I went ahead and I got it lined up properly, and it is, it is close. Uh, I'm off by about two or three degrees. But you can easily access this with no problem, get to the lines, you know, get to this big nylon nut here, and pull that assembly right out with no problem. Um, so just keep that in mind if you follow this video and you're going to do something like this. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my mark here now. I'm going to drop the tank. And then I'm going to get this piece of metal held up into place. And uh, start tacking it. I also went ahead and uh, drilled the holes in this uh, cover here. And I did eight screw holes equally spaced apart. And then I uh, tapped them, the sheet metal here, to uh, 1032. Now, um, being as it is only 18 inch metal, I mean, I think those screws, since they're a fine thread uh, screw that I'm using, they, they bite plenty good, but I think I may back them up with some nuts and tack weld those into place. Now, before I weld the bottom plate in here, the way that filler hose comes up here, it's gonna be really tight to this. And what I wanna do and then because I am going to go through the frame I'm going to put this sleeve in there and then weld this in to reinforce everything now to make that happen I'm going to cut this piece of metal out right here I'll be able to go straight through here with the hole saw through the frame put the sleeve in weld it in place then I'm going to have to build me just a small dog house right here just a little come out maybe an inch or two and uh, weld that in there too. But I'll finish that part up, the welding of this little doghouse, after that plate is welded up in place. I want to discuss a couple differences between the earlier and late model WJs. Now, on my late model, that'd be 02, 03, and 04s. They got a smaller 
diameter fill tube and also a smaller vent line. Now, compared to the earlier model one right there, and there you can see the difference. Now, the problem is with the later models, the hose has an expansion to it. This is the, the tank side right here. So if you cut off, let's say, that two inches right there, it is going to be very hard to expand that onto the fuel tank again. There's a, around a five millimeter difference. And then the fill side has a slight expansion, not nearly as bad. Something that you could handle. I mean, if you had to cut some of this off, you're going to be able to, you know, slide it onto here with some effort. And what I propose you do, and what I'm going to do, is I went down to pick a part and got me a fill neck out of a earlier model. This one came out of a 2000, and I grabbed the hose as well. Now, I'm going to sleeve it through the frame. So while I was there, I uh, cut a piece of drive shaft off right there. All you're going to need is just barely over four inches, and I still got to trim some off of this. So this gives you plenty of room through the frame. It's made of a good, you know, that's probably 14 gauge steel. I think that's the way to go. That way, not only can you, you're gonna maybe cut two inches off this end and then cut another two inches off this end. And because I, man, I, I hate cutting a full four inches off of here and trying to make it get, cause I mean, you're talking up in here where it starts making that turn. I don't like that so much. So I just think it'd be nice if we could just cut two inches off here, two inches off there. We're gonna see how it goes. And then plus, we got a little wiggle room in here with the sleeve. That's gonna help, you know, if we can get an, uh, an upward angle at it, just to help with the fill part of it. So you don't get that click on the handle or anything like that when you're trying to fill it up. All right. I put the tank up into the location Got the center line of that tank inlet and then transferred this line also to the other side of the frame. Now this is the center of the height of the frame from here to here. Now I'm proposing we go a little bit lower. That's probably about a good three eighths of an inch lower. So that's going to be in there like that. And that's my target right there. I also transferred this line to the other side as well. Okay, you can see here where I transferred the lines coming across here to this side of the frame. Because if you come through with that hole saw, the hole saw is going to want to fall inside the frame and you're not going to know if you're perfectly squared to the other side. So transfer the lines. I'm using this angle drill here to go through the frame and then we can use the hole saw from the other side All right, I had to pick up a two and a half inch hole saw because uh, the one that I had had that ridge on it. It only allows you to go in so far. Now, with that hole drilled on the other side, I can line up perfectly right there and drill through. Now, the sleeve should slide right through there. Look at that. Now we'll cut it to length and weld it in. All right, I got it all welded in place. Actually turned out pretty nice. But uh, one thing to keep in mind, this is still, I think, only 20 gauge. So concentrate your heat on the sleeve itself. And uh, otherwise you end up kind of blowing through. I didn't have a problem on this side at all. It went real well. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of fabricating. Now, here's what I ended up with. This is on the earlier model fill neck, the 99 through 01s. 
I cut off an inch and a quarter on the fill side that much right there and then I actually cut it off in between that nice lip right there which I like these you know it helps secure the hose on there and then removed the inch and a quarter and then welded it back on uh, I spent a lot of time welding that back on that is not easy now here's another one this one's out of a 99 um, but you can see the difference here in the length of these two tubes and that helps out a lot that uh, makes it pretty much perfect that looks almost like two inches off of there but um, and it might be but that worked out really nice I'm gonna go ahead and install this and uh, hook up the hose and uh, show you what we got all right here you can see I got the hose hooked up um, I removed one inch on this end and I think actually I could have got away with just three quarters of an inch uh, I got one of the vent hoses running through the same uh, sleeve right there and then on these later models where you got this larger vent hose that goes to the evap I'm gonna run that through the original hole down here and then I got two more hoses I still need to bring up here and uh, we'll see where I put those they can probably go in either one of these um, it won't matter but you can see it uh, turns 90 nicely you know into the sleeve there and then here on the fill side I got it all hooked up as you can see it turns really nice right there it even has maybe an ever so slightly downward slope you know through that sleeve which is a good thing on this side here you know I took off the one and a quarter off the fill tube one inch off the hose and also on the hose I wish I would uh, maybe take it off just a little less because you could just keep shoving this hose right up there and you know throw more clamps on it if you want or just I just don't think there's a need to cut too much of the hose off on this end the way I did it anyway okay I went ahead and got the metal up here I raised it up with a hydraulic jack put a piece of plywood over you know the base of the jack and then put this the metal on top of it raised it up now since we did put the ridges in here um, it actually in a way warps that piece of metal not a big deal because once you get it up here and put a little pressure against it um, it'll you know make contact with this and uh, you put a couple tacks in here then you'll concentrate on the areas that aren't touching and I got the jack right here right now and I got that tacked now I'll move it over here raise this up tack these places and I'm gonna just keep going around and get everything tacked up so it's nice and tight before I do my you know final weld on here and remember this is 20 gauge steel it's light it's pretty easy to burn through um, so I concentrate my heat on this here on the 18 gauge that's a lot harder to burn through kind of you know take your stinger point it more downward not so much at an angle and uh, it does pretty good I mean you get it you just gonna have to do a lot of tack welding and uh, we'll get this done sorry but I lost the audio on this clip now I got it all tack welded I put quite a few tack welds into this I moved the jack around quite often that I have underneath here the hydraulic jack to lift it into place and get it good and tight now that I got it all welded up this piece of metal is super solid as you can see it does not move it is part of the vehicle now I'll take you underneath and show you what I'm talking about with the tack welding it or how I raise the jack into place and get it good and tight before you tack weld 
it into place. Okay, here I got my hydraulic jack. Here's a stack of bump stops that are fastened to the jack. And then I got one of the welding magnets just sitting on top of there. And then when I raise the jack up, it pushes that Pacific point nice and tight up against the uh, wheel well. And then I go up above and I tack weld it into place. And then I just move the jack around to do the rest of it. And here you can see I caught a lot of tack wells. There's probably a hundred of them. But the tighter you get that piece of metal to the original wheel well, the easier it's going to be to weld and it will not burn through when you do your final weld on here. Okay, I got this welded in 100% now. The one thing I got to do is cut out this small piece here of this plate. Because of the fill hose would literally hit right here. Now I'm going to make it slightly oversized to give it plenty of room. I took this piece of metal from the original wheel well so you can make good use of this metal. And then with a little cutting and shaping I got to uh, also build two small sides I've drawn some lines right here and I'm just going to take my plasma cutter and blow this piece right out of here. Okay, I've been working on this for a little while. Real close now. You see there's we got the whole I got this one piece tacked in. And I used one of these contour gauges, you know, to kind of help me out on this edge over here because it does have a curve to it and it's not square to this. So I got this piece here shaped and made. Place that in there. I got it fitting real good to the uh, tub here. And then I place this on here. Draw a line right there and cut that out. We'll get this tack welded in and then weld it up 100%. Alright, got it all welded in. Turned out pretty good. Getting really close to reinstalling the tank. Alright, I got the uh, bottom of this all cleaned up. Ready to get it uh, painted. Show you one last shot of this here. I think there's a nice spot for that hose to come right up here. Go through with plenty of clearance. Alright, I'm going to get out the primer and get this painted up. Okay, I got everything painted. I used the uh, self-etching primer. Definitely use uh, a proper mask for that and have good ventilation. Alright, well I am ready to put this fuel tank back in. I really love the way this is turning out. All right, here we go. All right, I was able to reach in right through here and slide the hose on, the fill hose. Okay, for right now you can only install two bolts. Uh, because of the tra if you have a trailer hitch on there because the trailer hitch and uh, fuel cell share the same uh, bolts that hold them up there all but one on each side here if you measure from the very back hole where the trailer hitch goes seven 
seven and a half inches up, that hole there is the one that you use to mount the tank. I'm going to get a few things hooked up, gas lines, uh, electrical, and then we'll throw the trailer hitch in. Got all the hoses and uh, the electrical back up front uh, by the evap. Uh, of course, this will be on your later models. Then I got the uh, fuel lines back up to the fuel pump sending unit. Here I just wanted to give you a, a look at what it looks like up back there. You can see the space that I got between the tank and the plate. All right, it's time to hook up the fuel lines. I'm going to remove the two vacuum hoses that I put on earlier. Now when it comes to hooking these up, that green one there, that is going to go to your left when you're standing behind it. They are of different size, so you can't really mix them up. Put that on there and then you push that green tab down to lock it into place. Go ahead and put the blue one on, on your right side and push it fully down. Look just like that and you're ready to go check to make sure they're on there now one of the few things we got left I don't know if you remember this little bracket that uh, was in front of the gas tank at the very front of it and it's a little um, it had the connection to the fuel pump assembly well if you want to return that I ended up cutting out right there uh, one and three quarter inches out of it and then I had to flatten out these angles a little bit because the angle changes because the height changed if you want to return that. Uh, it's there because side to side motion of the fuel tank. So it's basically a brace to hold that. Technically since you take four inches out or more there's going to be less of that side to side movement because now the, there's less leverage from the tank hanging down so low. I went ahead and shortened it up. I'm going to put it back in. Okay, right up here you can see I put the bracket right back in. And it fits just like it uh, used to. And then that secures that tank from side to side motion. I'm just about ready to reinstall the EVAP system. Now one of the things, because I did use the older style fill neck with the larger vent tube on it, I've got to reduce the size of the hose from 5 8 down to 5 16 So I picked up this barb fitting here, which does exactly that, 5 8 to 5 16 And that'll be from this hose here, and now I'll go directly to the vent hose on the fill tube. This just happens to be another one I got. Now using this vent hose that came off the earlier model fill tubes, I'm just going to cut a small section off of here. Just that much. Then using this barb fitting, I'll place a couple clamps on here. Now I got the evap just hanging up here on one the rear stud. Uh, go ahead and hook up like your electrical connection. There was this vacuum line right here that was disconnected. This one here, that small filter. There's a small plastic filter. That's where that one went. And then this larger hose right here that went was toward the front of the tank. That goes to this location right here. And then, of course, hook up that uh, one line that goes to the vent on the fill neck. Let's make sure everything's hooked up. I got the one here that popped off. There we go. And I raise it up. And it is definitely more cramped with that uh, fill hose going through the frame like it does. But it all fits in there. Okay, we're almost done. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I put the bumper skin back on is go ahead and I'm going to cycle the ignition switch on and off a few times, get the fuel system all primed back up, fire it up, make sure there's no leaks here before I close this up. 
and uh, we'll put the bumper skin back on. All right, everything checked out, no leaks whatsoever. Now, before I put this on, I'm gonna just use a small amount of uh, RTV sealant on here. And that keeps out any fumes that should get into the cab from the exhaust system. <clears throat> here I got my screws, I got them all shortened up. They're just long enough to go through the nut just and that's it carefully reinstall the bumper cover and then return the push pins right there by the hatch four of them the two torque screws and then the ones at the bottom are not going to work. I'll have to show you the standoffs that I use. Just replace this 10 millimeter nut back here to the stud. When I removed this bumper, I had to cut the plastic pop rivets off. So I bought a box of 100 of these and this plastic pop rivet gun. Now these type, they are a one-time use. Okay, the last thing I did is I just finished everything off with this rust preventive paint. I really don't need it out here in Southern Nevada, but for all you people that are on the, in the rust belt, this stuff is incredible. A uh, little on the expensive side, uh, but I was real impressed how hard the finish is. I mean, it, very durable paint. All right, here's the end result after getting it painted. Turned out really nice. Now here's where I was talking, I had to uh, build some standoffs. I used uh, some all thread, and then you got these uh, like coupler nuts. These are longer ones here. And then just run a uh, screw through the bottom here. These are quarter 20 screws. Now, what I want to do here is because basically I kind of almost built a parachute and because uh, air could come off of here and then catch him back here in the back of the bumper uh, I'm gonna build a sheet off of here and attach it to the bottom of the skid plate if you look carefully I already went ahead and pre-drilled all the low spots right there and tapped these so I can attach the sheet to the skid plate and just use, you know, real short screws all the way across. I also have another idea. Uh, besides this one here, we'll see which one I go with. And that one I'll do a video on. I go with the other one. Well, I took it down to the gas station, went to fill it up, and I'm not able to fill it up as fast as I used to. I got a 
pull the handle one click away from full throttle on that otherwise it was clicking off on me so it took me probably a minute and a half longer to uh, fill the tank and that's probably because the hose doesn't have the downward angle that it used to have well I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video and if you did I sure appreciate the thumbs up and if you never subscribed to me before please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it and that way you get notifications of my next and upcoming videos and please uh, check out Rick's channel and subscribe to his channel as well sure appreciate it and I'm also an Amazon affiliate down in the description you'll see all kinds of links to products and tools we used in the video and you can do all your Amazon shopping right through that link and the channel earns a small commission thank you very much and we will see you on the next one